hybrid crappie right here. Fish and a half, 14. Nailed it. Fishing shallow backwaters is what we're doing. What is up guys, Joe Holland here. It is pretty early. Sun is just popping up. I am here in South Central Minnesota, I think. The metro area, as you can hear by all these cars going by, trucks going by, train going by. I drove about three and a half hours last night. I was in Northwest Minnesota yesterday doing some pan fishing and I'm gonna meet up with some guys today to do a little bit of crappy fishing down here in the metro area, which sounds pretty fun. Been doing some truck camping. It just is way easier than than checking into hotels and staying at hotels for me. So I'll show you the, the outfit right here. It's like a disaster in here right now, but there's a bed right here that is memory foam mattress. Got my pillow, sleeping bag and just a bunch of ice fishing gear scattered in there. Coldest night so far has been four degrees. Last night was pretty warm. It was like probably 22 degrees as a low. Yeah, 22 exactly. It wasn't too bad at all. The reason I'm filming in this little park and ride area, there's two giant trees here that I'm not sure what they are. We don't have trees quite like this in Maine, even though we're at the same parallel uh, northwise. But there's one right here. Take a look at that beauty. That's a big tree. It's got great big bark on it. I'm not sure what it is. It reminds me of some, like, we have weeping willows, but it's not a weeping willow, I don't think. But that's kind of what it reminds me of, because the branch is all pointing down like that. But the bark is, like, crazy thick, and then this one's way bigger. This one's huge. This is a ginormous tree. Look at the size of this tree. I don't know if you can see like, it's way bigger than me. <laughs> and like, I, it would probably take, it would probably take at least three of me to reach around and hug this thing, maybe four. So I don't know what it is. If you guys know what it is, let me know in the comments some kind of larch or willow or something but it is ginormous pretty cool stay tuned for this episode i'm fishing in the metro somewhere for crappy maybe some big bluegill too we'll see i am inside the metro area we're fishing backwater flooded sloughs we're looking at a maximum depth of four foot fish that come in when it's flooded get trapped in here and then just dominate the water column and eat everything they can and grow but they are highly pressured as you can see there's a handful of guys out here already handful of guys over here and these fish get beat on all the time so they're pretty smart so I'm going to learn some really cool tactics today to catching these pressured crappy. I think this is going to be a fun episode. <laughs> that one big one that came in had to have been a crappy, shape-wise. But the other two that just looked at me, I think might have been bluegill. It's dingy though. Dirty. Dirty water over here. Not much for visibility. It's actually cleaner than it was last time. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got maybe a foot of visibility. Yeah, we probably had about three inches when we were out here the first time. Dang. Maybe four inches. Wow. Here comes something small. Yeah, there's a lot of bluegills down there. They all usually come from the bottom. Yeah, this probably a gill then. The crappies will just usually just come straight in on your bait. 
Here's one. That's not a bad gill. Not a bad gill, huh? No, not at all. Look at that baby. I'd get back down there and put the All right. The do your dog's saying right there is a spot. <laughs> That's a pointer. Is that, is that the spot tilt? There one under there? Not quite the droids we're looking for, but... It's like that though, you catch one that big and the next one will be giant. Oh yeah, uh, it's fun to catch them, I don't care. I don't even care if they're three inches, I like catching fish. Alright, first one of the day for them. Right there you go. You wanna kiss them? He was not slow, I'll tell you that. What's that? He wasn't slow. No. He came in hot. Yeah, and then they he... commit, it's pretty. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we're just fishing the backwater out here. Just uh, was at 4.4 feet, uh, catching them just a couple feet under the ice, and they just keep moving around, and we keep moving with them. So it's about what we're doing. Wow, look at that one! Wow, nice. So that's half and half. Yep. Thick, huh? Yeah. Great big mouth on them. Yeah. And they get that different forehead than the blacks. Yeah. Yeah. But you see how the stripes kind of die out? Mm hmm Like stripe, stripe, and then it goes to black. He just had a monster. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that feeling. This is uh, basically just a, a backwater river lake that um, kind of refills, actually, um, every year, at least when the river floods. So, yeah. Get some new blood in exactly. here. Exactly. It's new just very, very fertile. A lot of bait in here all the time, so... <laughs> Yeah. Is it a white or a hybrid? Yeah, I can't tell from that part. It's meaty as all heck. Oh, yeah. They are. They're thick in there. That's a white. Just a white? I think it's a hybrid. Sometimes there's no telling. No, that might be a hybrid. He's got a lot of broken lines. Hybrid? Yeah. Man, they're thick this way. Yeah. So you see how his lines aren't like straight? They yeah. kind of go and break yeah, yeah. apart. The yep. whites will be like. Oh, okay, water, cool. Water. Yeah, it'll be like fine. They won't be all broken out like that. Are you eating these or no? No. Okay. All right, there's my first hybrid, guys. Just thick through. Kind of meaty. We're going to get him back. Let him grow. Let him go. Cool. That's what we say, and then this lake just freezes solid and just kills everything in. Yeah, you can really catch anything back here. We've caught walleyes through the ice, bullheads, griff, you've been catching carp through the ice back here, white black crappies, sunfish. Really everything lives back here. Anything that's in the river, you could pull up a catfish the next thing you know. Really stressing the shallow water again. I mean, we gotta really be quiet out there. I think the, you've noticed that we're tiptoeing to holes, yeah. trying not to make a lot of noise. Any any noise will move the whole school and we've drilled probably 75, 80 holes today trying to stay on top of them. Now with a little snow falling, I think the big ones are starting to bite and I think we're gonna get another one before the night's over. The hybrid crappie right there. White black mix, got it on the tip up with a salted shine or a salted fat head, homemade. And remember, when you're measuring copies, close their mouths. <laughs> yeah, that's over two pounds easy. Toss it back. Yep. Let's get them back. Sean, you're putting a good bag together. I'm trying. Told Joe we'd get a 15. We're still trying with that, too. We're getting closer. All right. Not a bad one there. A little black.
Ой, я повернусь. Так вот. So even in the shallow water, one of the tools that we, we can use is live imaging, whether you're using hummingbird, Garmin. I choose Garmin here, put it in the water. Right now we can see out about 50, 60 feet in this shallow water. If you're in deeper water, you'd be able to see out a little bit further. Um, but I have this handle set up, it's pointed the direction that I'm looking, right? So I'm looking 30, 40, 50, 60 feet out to see if I see any fish. If we're looking at this 25 foot mark right there, we're seeing a pretty nice sized fish right there, likely a big crappie, which we've been chasing around all day. As I'm painting to the right, Drift can't help himself, he's going after it. <laughs> painting to the right, not too much over there. We're seeing a fish here, fish there. We're really trying to look for a couple fish schooled up. Three fish, four fish is starting to get fishable. Griff is very close to those fish right now. Um, we can actually hone in the distance a little bit here. And we can watch this fish starting to swim towards oh, the, yeah. the camera there. Or the is that going transducer. towards Griff? No, he's coming towards us. That's something a little bit smaller. Probably not a giant crappie there, maybe a bluegill. Griff's probably out here at this 22, 24 feet. Can't quite see. You can see his jig oh, yeah. right down here at the bottom. Hey Griff, raise it up about a foot and a half. Yeah, so you can see this fish coming in. We got two yeah. foot grid right now. So that's actually a pretty decent sized fish. We zoom into one foot grid. Yeah, he's over. He's 12. coming to check over, check out the camera. Where the train of fish, where is he at? Lost him. Uh, right there. Is that him? We have him swimming away a little bit. Yep. Yeah. That's a beauty. Nice. Hybrid crappie right here, 13 and a half, 14, playing blade spoon. Had Griff over on the live scope, walked them right to me, came up, didn't hesitate, nailed it. Good one. Four feet of water. It's thick. And across yeah. the back. <laughs> it's me. Thick. It's me pounding three quarters, coming in two pounds. Sure thing. Good catch. Thanks, man. There we go. Let's upgrade that one. All right. We don't have any snowpack on the ice. We're crunching. There's slush over there. We're sloshing around in. In this shallow water, any little noise will, will spook those fish. It's cool you can see his jig from all the way over here. Just that little yeah, tiny Yeah, we've jig. had a few times where we've watched uh, other people yank up fish today, but really using this to find where those fish are setting up, areas that they're using, and then going over there with our Vexlars, Hummingbirds, Flashers, and putting jigs in their faces. Um, but using this as our search tool, not necessarily fishing with this in the same hole. Um, in this shallow water, they get they get to the hole really quick. So if you got a big transducer like this, you're going to wrap up in it almost every single time. So using our flashers, using this to search and find us some nice crappies today. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There we go. Crap. And then working as a team too. You don't see that everywhere across yeah. the nation. Yeah, that is interesting. In the shallow water and in these backwaters, we've had times where we have one person on live scope, we have two people with augers drilling, and we're actually trying to herd those crappies into holes that we already have drilled, being that they're so spooky you can't drill on top of them. So we're drilling holes just to simply move those fish and get them back to where we can get a get over the top of them on our existing holes. So a lot of teamwork involved, landing fish, herding fish, um, and hopefully a couple more big ones yet to round out the night. Yeah, I got a clam blade spoon, rattling blade spoon on there with kind of half a salted fat head on there. And this color seems to work really well on a lot of the backwaters. Some of the key forage in here is emerald shiners. And this bait really does a good job of mimicking the color of those and the flash of those emerald shiners. So this seems to be a hot color, whether you're using it in a pinhead minnow or a rattling blade spoon like I have today. And I think Griff's been using the, the tungsten Maki Maki over there and using some plastic. So a little bit of grab bag of everything, but they're, they're definitely liking this today in this color. Yeah. And guys at home, I think you can tell how hard these guys are working, not just to find the fish, but to stay on them by looking at this yard sale we got out here on the ice. <laughs> if you look around, there's like augers, 
electronics, rods, reels, shacks, dogs, sleds, chairs. There's everything everywhere, and it's just these guys probably each put on two or three miles in like a hundred yard circle just walking hitting each hole back and forth and then jumping around following the fish it's it's a kind of a numbers game where you're putting your bait in front of as many fish as you can you know the most possible and trying to pick out some bigger ones out of those schools flag a little bit of action Head shaker, little guy. All right. How we've been using the set lines <coughs> to cover water, right? So we're chasing around these schools of fish on foot with our jig and rods and our flashers, but we're allowed two lines in Minnesota, so everybody always has a jigging rod set up and then we have whether we're using tip ups or iFish pros we spread those out away from us right so if we have a tip up 30 yards away and that tip up keeps going up we know the fish are moving over there and it's quiet over there so those fish are more willing to bite than the fish that we've been walking over top of all day so sometimes they just want some peace and quiet and they'll eat a minnow that's sitting in front of their faces that's spread out away from kind of all the action so using that to cover water target some new fish and uh diversify our offerings for these fish. Imagine sometimes the biggest fish you, you catch comes on those, right? Oh, oftentimes. Yeah. I mean, a 16, 17, 18 inch crappie, they don't get old by being dumb, right? They, they, they've seen a lot of things and they've seen a lot of jigs before. And sometimes just that natural presentation of a fat head on a plain hook is what, what gets those big ones to commit and fools them. So. Somewhere left. Drifts kind of walking us in on live scope where these two big fish are moving. Trying to tiptoe as best I can in this slush, half frozen slush. How are we, Griff? They're swimming like that way now. Yeah, in this shallow water, they just move so fast. You can't keep up with them. Yeah, they're past you now. They're, they're that next set of holes. I'll we'll give them one more go. What do you like for a length on a rod? So uh, hole hopping, I like to fish a lot of 34, 36, 38s. Anything over 36 doesn't fit in a rod locker real well. So this one's a 36. My buddy built it for me. It's built off of a perch blank. Is that the best we got? We got a glimpse of him for a second. He's closer to the bottom. There you go. He's coming up now. Up or down or right where I'm at? Uh, he's coming to look at the <laughs> He's moving still? He literally came like this. Oh. Up towards the live scope. He's literally right five feet from the side. It doesn't work every time, guys, but it's been working a lot today. These guys work as a really good team. Pick off these fish. Coming back to the left. Well, that's going to do it today. We had some pretty good fish on the ice. You didn't get to see all of them. Uh, Griff, you, how many think you, you pulled out today? I think 25. Yeah, he got a pretty easy 25 with up to 13 and a half, 14 inches. Yeah. 
really thick ones too. I got, I was able to land my first hybrid, which was really cool. I did not get a white, but I got a half white. And Cody caught some good ones and Sean did too. So all in all, great day in Minnesota. Had a lot of fun fishing inside city limits, I think. Are we inside city limits? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, we're in, we're in the city limits. So that was kind of cool for me too.